everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming in July from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking to innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. So, did I tell you about my new friend? I have decided to write another science fiction novel. Now, when I was a teenager in high school, I came up with a concept. And the concept of it was of two rival time-traveling factions that would go back in time and fix things, and then the other faction would go back and set them right. And I came up with this idea. I wrote a little bit about it. I wrote a bit about the factions. I wrote a bit about the concepts and how it would work. And then I didn't think too hard about it, and I shelved it. I just put it away. Maybe I'll do that at some point in the future. Years passed. Didn't do anything about it. Then I happened to be at a used book sale. And I picked up an old pulpy novel. And I forget the name of the novel. Agents of Terra, I think it was called. And it was like a 50s novel. And it was like pulp sci-fi. Really fun. I'm reading this thing. And it's about time-traveling factions. Very similar to what I was creating when I was in high school and I thought to myself boy you know this has given me an idea maybe I should do this again maybe I should dig up that old tale of factions and because I had a lot of fun reading that book I had a lot of fun reading it it was like an old school sci-fi pulp fiction science fiction novel and I thought you know what maybe I can bring that back maybe I can bring that back but you know what I thought I, have, I don't have a lot of time. I'm really, really strapped for time now because, you know, there's work and, and school and, and things. I've got, I have very little time to, to, to work on a novel. But then here's ChatGPT. And I thought, oh, you know what? I wrote a book with ChatGPT. I wrote a nonfiction book, Nine Rules for the Future, with ChatGPT, and that's out on Amazon. Or you can read it on the website, ninerulesbook.com, totally free. And I thought to myself, well, maybe it can help me write a science fiction novel. So I went into ChatGPT website, and they just released ChatGPT4. I don't know, it's probably all over the news about how awesome ChatGPT4 is. So I thought to myself, well, let, me, let me try this. Let me play around with it a little bit. Let me see what I can do with this. So I went in, and I started a new chat saying, hey, I am writing a novel. And I gave it the parameters of the novel. Two factions, go back in time, change, one changes it, one wants to change it back, moral dilemmas, blah, blah, blah. And I thought I want, I want to write it in the 50s sci-fi pulp style. Something really fun and not too, not much of a deep think, right? So I started riffing with ChatGPT on this and I started riffing with the main characters and the, the you know all these different things and then I created a whole nother faction a whole secret mystical faction and this and that and I was just going on and on and on and having fun talking to this thing and just building out doing world building of this world of the two time traveling factions and and humankind and came up with all sorts of different concepts and at one point I said okay they're gonna go into the past and do X Give me names of some historical events that are not so well known that they could have gone back to. And it gave me a list of those. And then we were talking about going back in the time to find a, an artifact to help them travel through time. And we found more places. And it was able to tell me all about these locations, what people wore, what people, what people were like, what the, ta what the cities were like. It gave me all this great information, all this backstory. And then I was trying to figure out, okay, should I go with a multiple worlds timeline or a single world timeline? And then we talked about the, the differences between the multiverse and the single verse. And I thought, well, we really want to have a single verse because if you have a multiverse and you go back in time, you just change somebody else's universe. You really want to change your own. I mean, that's the whole point, right? And 
it told me about something called the Novikov conjecture, which says that if you go back in time and change something, something else will occur or something will prevent that change from happening. So the timeline remains correct. So we came up with this device that would allow you to change the timeline within a, a space and time. So that's what one of the factions used to go back and change history. And as we were going through this thing, I thought, this is really fun. Here I am riffing with this machine about this novel. And it came up with names of characters. It came up with all sorts of cool things. There was one point where I wanted to come up with the name of an AI character that would interface to the system that had all of the information which pertained to the original timeline. So if you think about it, one of the factions would have to know what the original timeline was from the beginning to the end so that it could recorrect what the other faction did. So we came up with the name of the faction. Uh, sorry, we came up with the name of the system. We came up with the name of the device. And I said, well, we need a wise cracking AI that's, that's the interface for this device. And it came up with Xeno. <laughs> which is a nice, short, pithy, and it was a philosopher who wrote some treatises on time. I didn't even know that. So it knows so much more than I do. And here I am riffing with ChatGPT, and I'm coming up with all this great material for the book. And I come down to the dinner table, and I'm talking to my wife about it, and I'm, I'm, I'm like really jazzed about this. I'm like, I can't wait to go back and work with it more to get more information about the book and expand on the book. And she says, oh, it sounds like you found a new friend. And I thought to myself, huh, I guess, kind of. Here's a new friend who is extremely helpful, will do whatever I ask of it to do, and has an encyclopedic knowledge of everything. For example, one of the locations in the past that we were going to travel to was the city of Ur in the year 2403 BC or something like that. And I said, so tell me about the city. What would it be like? How many people would live there? What would be, what would they dress? What was it consisting of? What language did they speak? All of this stuff, it came out just ba 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 I even had to, can you write a scene in which one of the characters over as standing on a balcony and overlooking the city. Describe the city. And it even wrote that, it, it, it wrote the description of the city. And I thought, wow, this is really giving me a sense for what it was like. So all those writers out there who are afraid of these tools, taking away your creativity, removing your creativity, replacing you, being able to generate novels, just spitting them out without that creative spark of a human being. I wouldn't worry about it so much because I think that the thing that is I'm going to generate in the end, this series of adventures of these time traveling factions, the original idea was mine, but I worked with ChatGPT almost as an editor to help me flesh out the concepts and do research on particular things within the book. And it made it so easy and fun to do this that it actually unlocked more creativity in me because it saved me so much time and so much grunt work to have to research things and ask questions. Like for example, if we decided on a single timeline, how could they figure it out? How does, it, how does the time travel work? If time travel, I mean, I asked, if time travel existed, how could it exist? And I got five really good explanations, which of course were all theoretical, and I picked one. And then I said, if there was some type of machine that could tell what the original timeline was, what would that be like? And it gave me five different things that it could be. Theoretical, of course. And I combined a couple of them or three or four of them to come up with the device that we actually ended up with. So as a tool to expand upon your creativity and make it easier and faster to develop your work, bar none. And it's a great editing buddy at the same time. 
I had a lot of fun working with it, and I can't wait to finish up this call or finish up this podcast so I can go back to talking to it again. Got a lot more to do on my novel, and hopefully you guys will want to read it when it comes out. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.